Welcome to episode two of this Let's Play series of Rule the Waves 3. Rule the Waves, not Rule the Roves. <laughs> I, I don't know what my mouth was thinking there. Anyway, uh, Rule the Waves 3. My name is Dan's Tactic. Welcome to the channel. Uh, we're at war, finally, a year later. It's now February of 1891. We're at war with Austria-Hungary. And you can see there there's now a B. Now, it wasn't showing there before. I've actually since saved the game and then reopened it, and it now does show. So I think if we had gone to one more month than when we left it last time, the B would have then shown up, which essentially means that we're blockading them. So uh, blockaded by you or by an ally, it's us, because we've looked at that in the last episode. Now we're going to start, this is going to be, I guess, where a lot of you that don't actually know much of the game will be most interested in the aspects that now sort of take place after we start to uh, run the next turn. I'm actually tempted to just run the turn and just show you what it does and then deal with it after that. I think I might do that. Uh, I'm, I'm mindful that this is much more a, um, a let's play to sh to, it, to, for new players to sort of show you what the game actually does do and then how to make best use of it. So let's just see what actually happens in here. So we, and, then we'll, and then we'll figure out, we'll work backwards. <laughs> <laughs> this may not be a good idea, but anyway, we'll see what actually does happen. By the way, our yearly budget has gone up a lot, lot higher. I'm not going to spend any more money at this point in time. I've got a lot of money coming in. I, I would normally at this stage be doing an evaluation of what we've got, figuring out what we can actually then go and do. But let's just play one month so you can sort of see what happens typically during war. So, we'd go, so you have zero ships on trade protection duties, but two are required. Now, what we'll see through here is this is actually the war results area down into this side. And you can see war results. We've got victory points of, we've got 100 points. Now, this is coming because of the blockades. So we're going to get up a little bit of, we're going to get automatically some extra victory points every single turn. Uh, trade protection, we need at least two ships on trade protection duties. I'd like to have a few more. And because we've actually got a fair few like cruisers, I think I'll actually put, say, three of these on those duties. So let's just go and do that one. So two are required. This will give VP to the enemy and might hurt your prestige. Continue anyway. No, we do want to fix that up. This is where, uh, when we have a quick look at our, our ships, and what I want to have a bit of a look at is if we're doing trade, um, like trade protection, it means that we're going to be attacking other light uh, cruisers, potentially armoured cruisers of the enemy. Now, we can have a quick look at this. We'll do a, a very, very quick evaluation. A good old friend, the Almanac, Almanac, comes back into it. Austria-Hungary ships, what have they got? They have got, really, a um, they've got a 4,100-ton four, a ship with a 2x5-inch. They do actually have a, 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 a light cruiser, the, the Aspen, uh, which is actually a, a 4,500 tonnes Speed of 20, this is fast. This is fast as well. These are both faster than my ships. Uh, they've got two 10-inch guns and then six by six. Now, we don't know. We may be able to see what uh, what they've got. They've got eight-inch belt armor. This is a very, very good ship. Very good ship. So the Aspen is going to be a problem. This is going to be like a raider that we're going to have to protect against. So uh, we're just we're thinking about what this one actually does do. It's fast. It's... Um, it's got 16 2 inches as well, but it's, it's more the 2 10 inch and then the 6 6 inch is, is really what the problem actually is. So what have we got that can sort of go up against this one? Now, the um, the other one, the Zenta, I'm not too concerned about. It does have uh, 5 inch and, and 3 inch guns, so it's not dramatic, although it's very, very fast. Uh, if we have a quick look at, it, at its armor, though, it has got only 1.5 belt armor. This is going to be very, very weak. Uh, compare that to our ships. If we just go back across to our light cruisers, we've got uh, four different designs. We've got the Nino Brixio. We can sort of see 8x5, 8x3. That would be similar to what we're seeing with the other one, but ours only travels at 23, so it's, it's one lower than their than their best ship. Have a quick look at the uh, at the data. So we'll just do a, a, a quick view from in here. Uh, this one has got um, two-inch belt armor. So, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's comparable to their weaker ship. Um, that one might be worth putting on board. Um, the others are the Taranto. We've got two, actually, we've got three classes. We've got um, the Taranto class back in through this side. Let's have a quick look and see its data. Two, two inch again, two five inch, three inch. So again, very, very similar with the Taranto. Come on, Masala, you, it's the, everything's riding on you. <laughs> View data. This one's got the uh, six, uh, ten, 10 six inch, eight two inch, uh, two inch belt armor. So we're really looking at a fairly, like in comparison to their 
the, uh, the other light cruiser that they actually have, we don't have a lot that can protect against this. What I might do is the six inch is going to be okay. We've got three of these guys. I could put all three of them onto duty so that, that, that way they'd all work together. Or I could mix things up a little bit. Now, we don't have anything that's really super fast. We do have the Marco Polo, which is the uh, armed cruiser. Let's have a quick look and see what its data is telling us. Four inches, it's got better survivability. It does have seven inch guns, so it's slightly better, but still doesn't compare to the light cruiser that they actually have. Um, I might throw... I might throw this one into the mix. Actually, no, it's a bit slower than the others. Let's go back to the Nino Brixio. Uh, we'll get the two Masalas. Let's just go this way here. So we get the six-inch guns and the five-inch gun. Uh, so we'll sort of go in with those. And it's more its more the number of these that I want. These are fairly quick firing. So this would actually be fairly good for us. Uh, now, with those selected, all I do is I just right-click and then just tell them where I want them to actually go and... It was trade protection is what we require. So when we're in wartime, and even when we're not at wartime, we've got different things that can then do different roles for the um, for us. So let's just go to trade protection. This, uh, you want to put all three ships into trade protection status? Yes, we do. And it's mainly to defend against the two light cruisers that they may bring into the fight. Now, if they bring the two light cruisers and an armoured cruiser in, then we're in a bit of trouble. Uh, so we'll see actually sort of how we go with that one. So anyway, they've, they've now been brought into the actual location. You can see they've got TP in through this other side. I'm sort of tempted to put in a couple of ships in as a as a raider, a raider group as well. Um, that way they'll just run the run around in the Mediterranean looking for other ships. It wouldn't be bad to do that, you know. Even just one. Why don't we put one of the Tarantos, which is a very, very small guns. Um, let's go and throw the, one of these Tarantos in as a, uh, as a raider. So I'll just go back in and just click on Raider. So this will be now a, raider, a, a single raiding ship. Essentially a, um, I forget what they're called actually now. <laughs> well, I guess they are just raiders. Anyway, we'll start that way. So um, that's, the, that's where we are, just to end our turn now. So we just needed to set that one up initially. Now, what happens when we actually do the do the, um, the, the 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 battles here is we end up with these sort of semi-random combat missions that do come up. And we can see this is a fleet battle. This is a big battle, actually. So <laughs> I'm still going to follow my original thought, and I'll, I'll, this will probably be an interesting thing to look at. Uh, fleet battle. Enemy is Austria-Hungary. Location is the Adriatic. And so the fleet size, we've got two battleships. They've got three battleships. We've got one armoured cruiser. They've got two arm uh, one armoured cruiser as well. We've got the six cr light cruisers. This is the whole fleet is coming back in there. Now, accepting the battle, declining gives the enemy 600 victory points. Even though we have lower numbers of battleships, I still think it's worth going into it to see what we can do and see if we can actually damage and destroy one of these ships. We're probably going to, we may be able to do okay with, with our bigger ships in here. We've got good survivability unless we get into torpedo range. We saw that in episode zero. So let's go and accept this. Now, the, the, um, the, Austrian Hungarians may pull back because of the uh, because of the actual armor on our battleships. Will they do it? No, they're going to allow it. They're going to go for it. So this is the combat, and let's just talk a little bit about what we're seeing through here. Now you can see that there's like a fog over the screen, and uh, the fog over the screen is uh, is indicating that it's actually night time. So we're starting off at night time. Night time is not a good idea for any side for the simple reason that the ships that end up... Um, in fact, it's not too bad for us because we've got so many light ships. Uh, you can see there, actually, we don't have all of those ships that, that were into the into the mix there are not in here. The two battleships are. Only one light cruiser is. Uh, one, the, our armoured cruiser is out in front, the Marco Polo. And we've got three of the corvettes. Now, these will all have different roles in the battle. So if we go to the, to the uh, order of battle in through this side, we've got the... Um, the, the Italian division back and through there, which, which will be the two battleships, the Italia and the, and the Napoli. So they're the, they're the two battleships in the, in the centre. Uh, the next one down, by the way, you'll notice that this has got like a square symbol. It means that it's under my control. So any battle group that's, that's got the square 
um, it's a bit loud actually, I'll just turn that down a bit for myself, I hope it's not too loud for you guys. Uh, but the actual, um, the square means that I'm in control, so all three of these I'm in control of. I can change that fairly easily. We then actually have the Italian Cruiser Division number 6, and that, if I go and click on that one, this is the, um, the Marco Polo, and that's got a triangular sail. I'm not in control of that one, it's just going to do its own thing. Now I can right click on this as well and see, okay, well, what's its mission? Actually, that's not going to do it. I'll just go in and that one's selected. Actually, I still can't do it there. If I do it on here, just go to status. There we are. It's in scouting mode. So its job is to find the enemy. And so it's out of that in front of everyone else. And that's its actual role. It's AI controlled. That's fine. So it's just going to do its own thing. The, uh, so that's indicating that it's AI controlled. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about all the different things that are in here as well. Like this is the this is the torpedo range. This is actually our visual range at night time, and this will then extend as as vision improves. And then this dotted line is actually the the uh, range of our weaponry, the the maximum range of our weaponry. The light cruiser division down through here has just got a single light cruiser, and then we've got the support division, which is the three corvettes. And again, if I just open these up, we can then sort of see what we've actually got in through there as well. So. These are, um, these are much, much smaller ships. These are not really viable for much at all. They'll just be very, very small. They do actually have um, a couple of, uh, like a six inch gun um, there, fore and aft. Yep, so that's not really gonna sort of do too much. Really these, I don't really want these in the fight. Uh, but again, if I'm wanting to sort of, you know, I can control them. And again, if we just right click on the on this top, look at status. So these have, oh, hang on, that's the actual Bellaria. Sorry, I'll just go and select the division status and these are in the support role and I've got different things I can tell them to do like independent core support patrol there's different aspects that they can do again if we have a look at the uh, at the cruiser division out in front and then right click and look at its status so it's got scout uh, screen patrol again so there's 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 it's got different sorts of roles this one in through here as well if we just look at the status for this one here, this one is set for screening. So it's just trying to get in between us and any, any sort of enemy um, enemy force uh, and to protect our battleships. And that's that's fine as well. So that, they're the different orders that we actually have. Although I have these under my own control at this point in time. Now I'm going to um, run this battle and not control anything at all. And we just watch what the AI does. The AI is very good, uh, whether you're fighting against them or letting them fight for you. And so there's a few different things we can do. Now, a few other things we will have a bit of a look at in here is it is night time. You can see the status down the bottom there saying night time. And it's 0601 on the 9th. So that's the, the date is the 9th. I think that's how it works. And then it's 601 in the morning. So it's still pre-dawn. And if we go across and click on the uh, time of sunrise, we can then sort of see that um, Zulu time for, for this ship is um, is uh, on the 9th is 0501. Uh, local time for the ship is 0601. So we're looking at the local time. Uh, it is night. Dawn will be at um, at basically at uh, 5:36 in, in actual time in 30 minutes time. Now the turns play out in 30 minute increments, and so you've got time elapsed to zero out of 800. It's 800 minutes for the battle, and um, if the battle's still in full rage, then it will actually then just continue on. We've got a few other little things that we can do up through here as well. So I've turned on, they're the different markers that I've got turned on. When development occurs, you can then sort of go and get things, for example, like radar, which we don't have just yet. Uh, we've got things like, for example, air ranges. We've got missile ranges. I can zoom right in on the ships as well if we wanted to sort of have a bit of a look at the actual graphics. This is quite cool to sort of see what does go on with the ships. Um, one thing we didn't actually have a good look at, and I don't know if we can do it with this. If I, if I go and click on these ships, let's bring it back to this range. I don't think I can show the, uh, f the field of fire. I should have done that before we came into battle. There's a few things I want to do ultimately just to get a better feel for our ships. But initially, what, why don't we just let the game run itself? So we're in the top of the Adriatic. So we're in, in through this side. And uh, I can just, if I press space bar, it's then just going to move forward one minute. So um, we now can see it's time elapsed one. Do it again. We should end up with another minute being played. The Marco Polo is just doing its own thing, just looking out for the other ships. You can see the visual range is very, very small down in through here. Um, and whatever I've got selected, if I just go to the battleships, this is the Italia. We might as well look at it from the, from the perspective of the battleships. I think that'll be fairly interesting. 
So we've got to find the enemy fleet. Uh, we're a little way away from wherever they might be. We don't know exactly where it actually is. Um, other things we can do through here is, is you've got different displays, for example, like the division names, um, the ship names, sort of what type of ships you're going to allow them to sort of show up on the screen. Um, it's certainly much more clear with what does go on nowadays than what it used to be in the in the older versions of the game. Uh, you can also just use number pads, like if you want to run forward three minutes, I so just press number three, and it does three minutes of, uh, of time. Uh, up to nine minutes, I can do up to nine. If I do the letter Q, it will then just keep on going until I press the space bar. So space bar interrupts whatever we're going, going to be doing. If I press shift and click a certain direction, I will then be giving it an order as to the direction to head. So shift and click will then just change direction. If I press control and click, it will go to that point in the map and just continue on until it reaches there. Uh, unless other things interrupt it. So there are interruptions all the way through. So there's a whole range of different things. Sorry, my dogs are just barking. I'll be right back. All right. And the other thing we actually have over through here is the game speed. Now, I'll leave it on normal. Um, but uh, by all means, play this at whatever speed you're most comfortable with. Uh, I do tend to like to go down to slow when there's a lot of things going on. Um, you can also just have it run at the absolute fastest available, so FA. So you can click on that one and it'll then just play it fairly quickly. Uh, other things we can do is we can actually have a look in through here and so view all the log entries. This can be quite useful. Like By the way, you've got order of battle over through here. The log of events turn by turn, um, which is okay, but it's going to it's going to run out of information fairly quickly. Uh, reports, if there's sort of like special reports that, that do come back through, uh, the objectives. It's a fleet battle, so essentially our objective is to do as much damage to the enemy fleet as we possibly can. And similarly, theirs would be the same as as, as for us. They're, they're going to be trying to damage our fleet. Um, so. You essentially just manoeuvre and do what you want to do. But there's a few other ways we can play this. Like we've got, for example, this is um, all the world's fighting ships. We can have a, have a bit of a look to see what we might be coming up. This is, I don't know why it's called all the world's fighting ships. I mean, it's just the Almanac. Uh, I think it should just be called the Almanac. But anyway, we can actually go and have a look to see, again, what we're likely to come up against if we wanted to sort of have a another quick look at the... Um, at the Vienna, for example, you know, what have we got? 5,100 tonnes, uh, two guns at the front, one at the back, eight-inch belt armour, etc., etc. So we'll just click on OK. Um, other things, this is more for aircraft when they become available. This is the uh, shortcut help, and it does give you, again, information about how to actually sort of look at the game and how to, how to actually run it. And then we also then have um, add a note on the map. So if you do want to actually add something, I haven't, I haven't played much with this one, and I did actually have a problem where I couldn't delete the notes. <laughs> so I'm not sure exactly. I haven't, I haven't done much with that one. And then the final one here is actually just auto run the battle. And this is actually what I'm, I'm going to do. And I'd suggest that you actually have some test games where you just do this. And you can interrupt this. So I think if we do it, it's going to say auto run the battle. Do you want to auto run the battle with both sides on AI and no message box interruptions? You can pause by pressing space. Let's do that and then I'll pause and we'll have a look and see what's going on then we'll just let it run again. And watch what the techniques are and the strategy that the AI uses because it's very, very good. If you're a new player, this is a great way to learn how to approach battles and we can then talk about what the thinking is as we see things develop. This is primarily intended to be used when all your ships are in a safe space or in port and you want to finish the scenario that can be used to let the entire scenario play itself. We're going to do that as a, as a, as a learning exercise. Now, Proviso, if we end up losing battleships, I'm going to save scum. <laughs> so we'll just click on OK. And so it's now going off doing its own thing. Now it's got the fastest available. Let's just go and make it say normal speed and just let it do its own thing again. So I'm just going to watch what happens. See how they're milling around. Now they've seen a group of ships. Now what actually happens here is they have, uh, the other ships have now come into, into range. We've got, the, um, we've got two battleships. We've, we've identified, identified a Monarch class in here, which is with the 9-inch uh, belts and midships and uh, three 12-inch guns. So we've identified that particular ship. Uh, it's now daylight, so it's twilight. So it's, it's just becoming, it's just, just pre-dawn. Um, so it's, the light has improved. This is our visual range and similarly with the enemy as well. So it's got, they've got a battleship, a battleship, we, and you know, we don't know which one that's going to be. We haven't identified this ship, but it came through. It's We think it's an armoured cruiser. There's another armoured cruiser we think it is. We don't know what this one is in through here. Now, I would assume that the first three are going to be battleships, and 
that will be the actual armoured cruiser, and this will be the light cruiser. That's what I, I would assume. Now, if we have a look at our ships, our two battleships are now sort of um, are, are running uh, parallel with the enemy. So they're sort of uh, trying to get like broadsides. So they're just inside our range. And we now start to see things like, for example, identifies unknown ship as, as a armoured cruiser. The armoured cruiser opened fires at the Napoli back and through here. Now, we should see... Um, we're not seeing splashes in around the place, but um, that's sort of what we should be sort of identifying. So it has identified things, and it's then going to start doing what it's going to do. Again, if I go to the actual log files, this is actually what's happened over the course of the last few minutes. So, um, so at uh, 5.38, uh, the B Italia um, sights an unknown ship, sights another unknown ship a minute later, a minute later sights another unknown ship. The, um, the light cruiser Ven Venezia identifies another ship as, a, as an armoured cruiser uh, and another one as an armoured cruiser. Now, it's misidentification, but that's what it thinks it actually is. Italia sights uh, an unknown ship and then identifies it as a battleship. Uh, and then finally, at uh, like, you know, sort of, what's that, eight minutes after the start of, of um, you know, visual, visual, uh, visuals of the actual enemy, uh, we then got the Venezia opens fire at the B-class monarch. So identifies the... Um, um, the armoured cruiser as an actual, uh, as a pre-dreadnought battleship of the Monarch class. Um, and then the armoured cruiser back in here, which we think is actually a battleship, is firing at our Napoli ship. Now we can filter this, which is quite interesting. It's quite cool. So I think if I do, for example, like, um, I'll just do Monarch and just see if that actually does it. Yeah, so anything that says the word Monarch, I can then get it. Now this is, uh, one, interestingly, this is actually, and it's actually quite cool. It's, um, it's, um, uh, what's the word? It's uh, it's case sensitive, <laughs> which means that if you do the word B and filter, it's not going to really pick up much. But if I do a capital B and then filter, I'm going to get anything with battleship. So anything with the with the capital ship uh, capital B in there, which is actually very very handy. So I'll just clear that. Click on OK, and again we'll just follow and just watch what actually happens with the fight. Like we've still got this th this thing depressed. We're running at normal speed. I might just go down to slow speed so you can sort of see what does go on with this. So we're seeing all sorts of things happening back over through here. Now the Napoli turret jammed, but then it got back into action. So that's actually not too bad. Again, both fleets are now sort of moving through. We now have identification on the different types of ship. So this is an armoured cruiser. We've still got two more unidentified ships at the back there. This is the Maria Teresa class of battleship, I think. I don't know if we can see anything about that one just yet. We've got two Monarch class battleships at the front. And so our battleships are just going to move in. And we'll just, we'll just keep on watching what does go on here. And the two fleets are sort of arranging. Now, nobody has actually moved out of the way. And again, I can take over whenever I feel like it. Now, we're seeing different reports. Let's just go back into, oops, not that one. Sunrise is just about to come up. Uh, if we go back to the log entries again. So we're not seeing any, any actual hits at this point in time. And this is a very inaccurate uh, era that we're actually in. So I'm just click OK. The thing I'm a bit mindful of is that I don't really want these ships to go much inside the torpedo range. So. The battleships are sort of firing away at their ships. Hopefully we're scoring some hits. We won't know. It doesn't tell us anything like this. Uh, they're traveling at 15 knots. What are we traveling at? We're traveling at um, uh, 16 knots. Okay, so we're going slightly faster than them at this point, but we're going at maximum speed. By the way, I didn't actually mention this, and my, I'm actually covering it with my with my uh, my head. And down the bottom right, there is actually it's telling me that it's overcast weather. Uh, the wind is, has got moderate speed. The day sighting range is, is 2,300 yards at the stage, and night sighting range is 3,500 yards. So that's actually sort of under where I am, just sort of down there, down that way, in around this area. Uh, you can see the wind direction there. That will then push the smoke. And smoke is important. There's a lot of smoke that gets generated in this particular game. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to take out one of these guys. So I'm sort of not think I'm thinking that this will be a fairly ineffective battle over the course of time. We've only done like 60 minutes worth of... Um, so we've, we've been fighting for an hour, essentially. You know, or we've been in the battle for, since it, for an hour. Let's just keep on going until we sort of see, start to see some hits. So I'm going to be looking over here. But just look at the look at the uh, look at the techniques of what it actually does do. 
So the battleships are moving in. So they're moving in closer. And um, and our, our other, the, the light cruiser and the armoured cruiser is staying back at this point in time. They've also got their um, armoured cruiser still in the in the battle line, still sort of coming in and attacking our ships. We're seeing that there's, um, there's you know, splashes all the way around the ship. Also, the ships themselves, like if we go into the Bia Talia, we can see there that we've got the um, we've got the 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 guns that we actually have. It, it shows you the direction the guns are actually fighting in, or they're firing across. And so, in this case, they actually are firing across the decks. This is sort of a weird design. <laughs> I think some of the German ships also had this design in this era, but this is sort of like a strange design where we are getting broadsides with uh, with what we're actually doing with the ship itself. We also have secondary guns, and so we actually have six-inch secondary guns. And these can often do the damage. Uh, let's just talk a little bit about, about this actual screen, because this is actually a fairly important screen. So we can see there we've got the main turrets, we've got a starboard wing and a port wing. These are, the, these are wing positions back out through here on either side of these. Uh, the gun calibre is 13 inch, and negative three indicates that it's actually a, a fairly poor uh, design. Like it's, you know, it's, it's actually, it's, it's large, but not very efficient. If we look at the data, we can then sort of see 13-inch um, maximum range of the guns is 9,000 yards. Now, this outguns the enemy, but, um, you know, like we, and we've got very, very uh, good belt armour, but we, I think our belt armour is narrow on these, which means it doesn't extend very high, uh, which means that the decks and, and a lot of the, um, the superstructure of, of our ship will be a little bit vulnerable. Anyway, that's sort of where we are. This is the... Um, this is the, this is the belt penetration range that we sort of end up would end up having now the enemy is nine inches and eight inches so even at close range technically we can't break through its belt uh, the deck though we do actually have like if we come in under six thousand we do actually have good penetration against the decks uh, if we can get a shot on the deck itself but it is hard with these guns these fire, this, this is, the status is deliberate fire. There, there's only been 10 rounds fired so far in the battle and, um, and no hits have been scored with this at all. The rate of fire of the gun is 0.16. So and if we have a look at the details, we can then see what this actually is. So this is for the, uh, the target is the Monarch class. The range is 4,100 yards at this point in time. By the way, everything is Imperial. That's sort of like the nautical way of doing things. Uh, the basic rate of fire is two. Uh, the adjusted rate of fire is 1.18, and that's maybe because of crew quality, things like that, I would guess. Um, the ship rate of fire modification is minus 10. Uh, tech, tech level rate of fire modification is minus 100. Uh, crew quality, there we go, minus, uh, minus 10 there for crew quality. We're under fire, so that also reduces how fast we can fire the guns. We're using deliberate fire, meaning we're trying to aim carefully as, if we can. Uh, so that's actually also happening. Uh, it's an obsolete gun. It's a negative 40. It's not as much obsolete, but it's that negative three is a big, big problem. And so the final rate of fire is only 0.16, which is very, very slow. So that's actually, that means we're firing, what, once every five minutes or so, maybe uh, five or six minutes. So it's a, it's a long time between firing the cannon, uh, before, be, sorry, between firing the, um, the guns. Um, now the rate of fire, yes, yeah, so we've got the details in there. That was what we just had a bit of a look at in through that side through there. As we come back down, rounds left in the main. We've got two, 262 in this particular one. Uh, I'm not sure what the middle one is in there and how that sort of then works, but we've got 97% of our rounds that are left, um, which is actually means we've, we've gone through 3% already, which is actually not, not that great. The tar target is the B Monarch class. The hit chance is a 0.92, which is also reasonable. It's not too bad. We have a look at the details in through here. So the range there, like the basic hit chance before, like if, if everything was ideal, would be 3.6. Uh, the crew quality brings that one down. The target size brings it down because it's a little bit smaller. Uh, the fire control, it's only local fire control. Now we get better fire control over time in the game. It just means that, you know, the actual control over when we fire and how we coordinate it is substandard. Uh, so we've got negative 20 there. Our tech level is poor, so that's negative 50. The ship accuracy modifier is negative 10 and that can be for, for all sorts of things like this i think our ship is slightly overweight and things like that can have a bearing on what's going on through here uh five ships firing at the same target negative 30 meaning our final hit chance is actually quite low but we have a lot of ships firing at that particular ship and so that's actually with our main guns we then have secondary and tertiary guns and so you can see there our secondary guns are six inch 
and these are also under deliberate fire. Um, so secondary gun ports. Uh, uh, we've only got one. We've only got two. Uh, of these six inch guns, which is a bit of a shame. We've only fired 10 rounds in through here as well. Uh, no hits. And so, um, and the target, um, the target is the, is the Monarch. And it's also got like a, um, a, 0 .1, a 0 0.18 um, chance to hit in through there as well. So even less than the main gun. And we, again, we can have a look at the rate of fire to see what the rate of fire is. is. Like the rate of fire is a 1.12. So a fair bit faster ultimately than the, um, than the, the main guns, but it'll have a, a smaller range. And then the details in through here, again, we're looking at 0.81. Again, just through the different sorts of things that sort of then, then impact this one. So our ability to hit things in this era with these sort of ships is pretty minimal, <laughs> which sort of, it, it's, it, it becomes a bit of a, um, a, bit of a, a lucky dip. You don't really know what you're gonna get. We do have missiles, so we've got port broadside. Now these are all submerged uh, missiles, so these these have to be fired by aiming uh, actually by actually by broadsiding. So uh, we can fire torpedoes through the broadside, but it's going to be it would be very very lucky to score a hit with that. Uh, tertiary guns, we have um, two uh, two tertiary guns, five inch guns on the port, and and also two on the starboard. Uh, they've actually fired twenty six rounds, so they're just firing away. They're just Pumping, pumping the the, um, the the small shells out as fast as they can. Again, they've scored nothing though just yet. There is a um, we've already we've got ninety one percent of these shells that are left, and again we've only got a 0.18 chance of actually hitting the uh, the enemy ship. That's sort of how this all sort of then works. Uh, data the crew quality is negative one. Our crews are not great. They're sort of like fair I think at best. No radar. Uh, local is the only fire control we actually have on our ships at this stage. Again, over time we get better technology, which helps with that. No damage happening just yet. Any log entries particular to the Italia will then sort of show up through here where turret J jammed. Turret J is back in action. So it happened very, very quickly. Within one minute it jammed and then was unjammed. And we don't we don't we won't know these things on the enemy ship, by the way. This will be happening on the enemy ship as well. Uh, maximum speed is 16 of 16, current speed is 16. Uh, current course is, is 61 degrees and um, yeah basically we're sort of uh, like you know we, ca we can sort of have it if it's trying to evade it can be evading anyway we'll just if we go to division we can then sort of see the, the what's happening with the actual division now this is interesting we've taken damage on the Napoli already so on the Napoli let's have a look and see the ship details in here and so this one has um, starboard wing the port wing has been disabled. See how this has actually been hit? And so this has actually been hit. Um, so that's a that's a problem. If you have a look at the log entries. So um, actually it's just saying it was jammed. There's no actual damage that's happened in through here. Actually, that was not quite what I was looking at, was it? That's ammo. This is this is supposed to be damage. But I think that, that may just because because of the jamming. So I don't. We haven't taken any hits. That's okay. We don't want to be taking hits if we can help it. So let's just keep on going. So we're seeing splashes around us. Ah, now there we go. There was a um, an action that happened in through here. It's now sort of gone past into the next into the next minute. If I go back now to the um, to all of the action that's actually taken place. So we've got uh, at uh, 6.01, the Marco Polo engines are giving trouble due to extended high-speed steaming. So, <laughs> so the poor old Marco, the armed um, cruiser, is not performing all that well. Um, the, um, yeah, so the, the Italia turret then jammed. It's now back in action a, a minute later. We saw all of that. We then actually see that the, uh, the B Monarch, the, the battleship, the Mon uh, Monarch class, fires four light guns at the B Napoli and one of them hits. Uh, the B Napoli uh, 4 or aft, I'm not sure why it's got 4 slash aft hull is, has been hit. But anyway, there's been a hit on the hull. That there, uh, that little asterisk means that it's actually penetrated the hull. And so a small gun, a, like one of its one of the light guns has actually hit the Napoli. And so if you go and right click on the, actually I'll have to get rid of this one. So, um, and the Napoli is reducing speed due to heavy flooding, which is a real big problem. The Napoli has been detached because of heavy flooding. So it's actually now in its own, it's now gonna go off and do its own thing. Um, and so it's, and it's reduced speed due to, to, to heavy flooding. The, um, so, and then the other ships, the smaller ships of the enemy are now 
uh, firing on the B Napoli. So they're going to now start to to pepper that one. We're now in a lot of trouble in this in this sort of instance. So uh, the um, Marco Polo is back in action. The Napoli turrets are back in action. So you can see we've had a pretty torrid time of this. I'll just clear the uh, that B. Just get rid of it um, and click on OK. I can right click on this one and then just have a bit of a look to try to see what's going on so this turret is now back in action you can see that the structure has taken a little bit of damage so we've got like um, 6613 out of 6775 sort of like hit points I guess uh, flotation we, we do have some flooding through here so flotation points per turn we're going to be losing flotation until this gets um, fixed up and what should happen if we watch the AI it should detach that ship and probably will detach all of the ships now and try to get away from the enemy and go back to port. And so that's what I would imagine it would do. That's definitely what I would be doing at this point in time because we've essentially lost this fight at this point in time. So even though not much damage has actually happened, there's enough damage to be concerning. Uh, so we need to stop this before the flotation runs out and we are flooding a little bit per turn. So let's just go and close this one off. And we'll just play it out a little bit more. You can see they've, they've got some of their light cruisers uh, sitting back, uh, waiting for action. Uh, it's now four ships against one, essentially. Uh, the other ships we need to have down through here are just staying out of the way. So let's just go and, and let it run its course. Just a more happening. Oh, gee, they're actually running in. Now, the Napoli hull was hit again, but there's no asterisk, which means it didn't actually it didn't break through. I'll just try to try to stop the action whenever anything happens over through here. They've now moved away, which is interesting. The, the B Napoli is still actually firing along. Damage is at 2% uh, back and through there as well. If we just go and right click on this one here. Okay, they've actually fixed their flooding. If we have a look at the log entries for the Napoli. So, um, so six inch um, four, four or after. Uh, um, Hull has, has been hit, uh, detaches because of heavy flooding. Uh, turret J is back in action again, limits the flooding at, in, at 6.13. So two minutes after it was actually hit. And so um, the, uh, and then it was the, the six inch hull um, was uh, on the, was hit. Um, yeah, basically the, the, we were hit by, by a six, sorry, the six inch, six inch, I mean, a six inch, inch firing came in from um, the two medium guns from the Monarch class. And it did hit the hull, but it didn't actually do any damage. So that's sort of what's happening in through there. So we're back in action, meaning that we can still keep this fight going on. Now they're moving away, I don't know why. And we're not sort of seeing anything like the 15 knots. We may get some visual, oh, there we go. We've actually hit the, the Monarch. We've actually done medium damage to this, which is actually, this is what we're reporting. If we zoom in on this and have a bit of a look to see what's actually going on, uh, we may just get some clues as to what's actually happening. Now they're firing, this gun has been knocked out. So their, um, their aft gun is, is gone. Their forward gun can no longer fire at us and that's trying to detach. So it's trying to now go back to its own port. So it's actually taken some damage at the back there. So its gun has been knocked out. These guys here are still firing. So they've got two guns firing and also their smaller guns are also firing at us and similarly in through this side as well. So these are still all doing what they're doing. These are much, much less. So we can actually now push the uh, push what's actually happening. I love what the AI does without even playing the game myself. So they're now gonna be firing away. You see there's still splashes around the Monarch. Uh, they're still firing at us as well. And we'll have a quick look at the log entry in through here again. So um, that was when we got hit and nothing else has really sort of happened in through there. Now, we see certain things, uh, like for example, the B Italia fires four 13 inch guns at the, the Monarch class and the target is straddled, but with no hits. So we will see certain hits. Now, when did we get the, um, where did we get our hits? Maybe it was a bit earlier than what we thought. Um, yeah, I thought we might have sort of seen yeah, I'm not seeing any of the actual action that's 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 hitting the um, the uh, Monarch class. So we don't know what ship that is. There's two Monarch class. Let's just go and uh, do Mon and filter and just see if there's anything where we can see a hit coming in. Uh, opens fire. Oh, there we go. And oh, that that fires at the Benatoli. One hit through there. 
So there's been there's been damage done to it. And now it could just be that the, the turret has jammed like like what ours did, and that that's considered to be medium damage. It's certainly the hull is not the, the turret is not moving. Let's just uh, filter that one. Sorry, clear that one. Click on OK. They're moving out of the way. Still targeting these. By the way, other things I can do is I can actually go and, and keep the action like this, and, and then just it will then just follow the action just by locking that in, and that can be a, a good way of doing this. So things are still moving, and now we're moving out of out of range. Sorry about that, I just uh, had a phone call coming in, so I just had to uh, pause for a second. So just stopping it in here, you can see that they've now extended the range out to the limits of our main gun. So we, we really can't, like, this, they're, they're disengaging. They're faster than us, ultimately, we'll just try to keep with them. They've brought the armoured cruiser in, and the poly is firing every so often. So we're masking where they're going. We can sort of zoom out and see where they're going. They're probably going to Polar. They're probably going to go back into port at this stage. Now, if they can fix their ship, they may come back. Like, if we pause this again and then have a bit of... Actually, they're back in range again now. Um, this one here, we're not seeing the same sort of damage that we saw there before. So, we, you know, we sort of saw that there was something that was wrong initially. Let's just go back into here and uh, have a bit of a look to see what's going on. So this is now back in action. So it looks like it was just a jam. Uh, so they are now firing back at us again. So um, yeah, this will just continue on. Now, from our ships, I think we can only get one... Yeah, actually this one's now jammed again. <laughs> and this one doesn't have... Can't get, uh, can't get the action happening. The Napoli can still get both sides, actually. So both broadsides are now working. So I've only got really got one of our battleships, which is operational at this point in time in the actual battle itself. Let's just keep it going. Let's see what actually happens. Yeah, they're moving into Polar by the looks. They're sort of uh, heading straight up to Polar. So they're going to disengage. We'll just wait again. We'll watch what the AI does. The light cruiser has now moved out of the way. Uh, have a quick look and see if there was a problem there. Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> The Napoli's been hit a few more times. Um, so uh, yeah, the Monarch's firing its medium guns at the Italia. It was hit, uh, the hull was hit, um, and uh, and then the Napoli hull was hit in the uh, extended belt. The extended belt is the front of the or back of the ship essentially. So probably be the front of the ship, and it actually impenetrated. Um, so uh, it 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 then two minutes later. So it, it I think it must have disattached itself at some point and then it got back into the battle line at that point again as well. Um, so it was actually hit. The, uh, then the armed cruiser fires four medium shells at the Napoleon, and one of them does actually hit. And this one actually also broke through. It's a shell burst limited by the coal bunker. And so it actually got inside the Napoli. So that if we have a look at the Napoli, if I, um, I don't think I can actually do it from here. But um, and then the superstructure had a hit where the where the shell just passed straight through the superstructure as well on top of the ship, and so there's a lot that's actually happened in here. We've certainly taken some damage, and we don't know what damage they're taking from the other side as well. If we just click on OK with that one, and then just have a look at the Napoli, and just sort of see, you can see their flotation. We are flooding, so we've, we've got more problems. The structure has now taken more damage. Um, I'll just let the AI do its thing because, again, it's it's worth seeing what the AI does and when it thinks it's had enough. Uh, it's still actually doing. So our, our heavy belt armour, which we know is narrow, so we're not getting much, as much protection as we probably should, is uh, of limited value uh, to what we're actually sort of doing. But this is a, a good thing for us to look at to sort of see how we compare. I think we're still... Uh, the AI is trying to keep the pressure on. And Monarch is firing back the other way. This is, comes their light cruiser. They'll be getting very close now to coming into port. Just keep it coming. Just looking over here to sort of see if there's anything. That's if it's firing at us, we're not really firing at it. Okay, Polo is opening fire. Oh, hang on. There was another heavy, another hit there somewhere. 
Ah, so the Italia engine room was hit. So it was actually the the the, the belt extended actually had another pass through that actually then ended up hitting the engine room. And so we, we're taking a really we're taking a bit of a, uh, a, a hard area here in here. If we go back to the um, this one here, our flotation actually we're heavy heavy flooding now. Um, we're losing a lot of flotation points per turn on the Italia. Uh, which is really really bad. If we look at the log entries, you can see there that a, a 12 inch um, uh, shell uh, hit the engine room. Um, and what's that done to us? If we have a bit of a look, um, have we, has it slowed us right down? Current speed is nine, so um, maximum speed is nine. So we're now we've now been the engine has taken a massive massive hit in that particular in that particular exchange. Hopefully. The AI will now detach this one because it's going to sink if it stays, if unless they can fix this one up. No, they're staying the course. I guess while the enemy is still sort of running away. Let's have a look and see if we can spot any other problems with these other ships. 15 knots. Medium damage there for that Monarch class. And 15 knots there. Again, if we have a bit of a look to see if we can pick up any, any clues, this gun has been possibly just jammed I would guess we're not uh, we're not getting much information back as to how we're performing the armed cruiser is just sort of uh, staying back some more hits coming back in oh actually the Italia now limits the flooding let's have a look and see what sort of limitation it did it's down to two that's actually okay that's survivable but we have got a lot of water on on board the ship now and we're still just traveling at nine which is actually okay I'm thinking that these guys will be hitting polar pretty soon. They're moving in. We're, we've slowed right down. They're extending their range. So if we press space, you can see there that they're now outside our firing range, which means that it's essentially game over. And we've played 177 minutes, so nearly three hours. It's still morning. And off they go. <laughs> I love seeing how the AI plays it. So it really was just exchanging broadsides for as long as possible until, oh, hang on, they've now turned. Now, why are they turning? And their armed cruiser is coming back in, possibly just to, um, to mask this group. They're still moving away. Now, up through here is where we start to sort of see the, um, this is like minefields and things like this that we have to then be careful of. So we can't really, we can't go inside that area. Ooh, they're coming back around again. What are our guys going to do? They're actually lining up for another fight. Now that they're so close to their port, they can afford to be a little bit more adventurous. I love how the game does this. It's, it really, it's a very, very good AI. I mean, I would have chickened out before now. I would have been going home with that big hit to the Italia. I can't afford to lose any of my battleships. So their ships are now heading into port. They're coming around the corner. They're tackling the Marco. So they're actually now going after that. They're seeing that there's, there's a weakness here with the Marco. If we have a look at the Marco, um, log entries, just jam turrets. Not a problem, not a problem. We should be faster than them, so we should be able to outrun them. Actually, they're coming back out again. Our ships are still in the fight. Just going to this so we can sort of move in and watch things actually develop. They're just staying close to home now. Our battleships are heading off again. We don't know what damage we've done to them, but we can assume we've done some. coming in. I have a phone call. That's why I like to record in the middle of the night actually because uh, no one's ringing us at that stage. It's all, it's no, it's no one that we know. It's always just going to be sort of some sort of spam but <laughs> it's frustrating because the answering machine kicks in. I've got to pause whatever I'm doing or mute things. Uh, anyway, we've got the, um, the ships are still 
uh, tr uh, tracking through. If we have a look at the Italia again, we still have some very mild flooding. We've got like a heavy hit that has come in, one medium hit. So it, we've taken damage um, in through this one. So this is, this is showing us that this design is not great, even though it's got very, very thick armor. We don't really know what's happened with these ships. I would have loved to have killed one of their, one of their battleships, but that, that would have just been a big, big bonus at this stage. So nothing much has changed. Now they're moving back into port by the looks of things. That light cruiser looks like it's taking a bit of damage. We'll have a couple of the logs. Okay, we've, uh, some, of the, um, some of the signals have been misunderstood. Yeah, the last big hit was the uh, engine room. These guys are still doing fairly well. They're sort of now just playing around in front of their port. We can see they're right in the right in the limits of, of their range uh, at this stage, which makes it also you know it's very very inaccurate. Uh, if we have a look at the uh, the Italia again, we can see there the hit chance is 0 0.07, which is minuscule. And if we look at the details again, we can sort of see there that the um, range 8,500 uh, gives us that sort of dictates the basic hit chance. But then we've got things like the the um, we're now the ship is now turning, uh, the target is turning, so all of these things sort of make it more difficult. So zigzagging your way through things certainly does help if you're trying to avoid or evade uh, anything that's actually happening. So we're now just going to sit outside their port and wait for things to happen. Now they do actually have a, um, a coastal battery, a six inch coastal battery, which we have to be a bit careful of. Yep, so they're now moving, moving into port. cruiser is t attracting a bit of attention. We can't go into this into this minefield zone. Ooh, did we actually get a hit on this one? No. It's down to five knots. There's, there's a chance we've actually done some damage to this. We can't see anything there, but there is a chance that that's actually happened. Their monarch is, um, yeah, look, it's, it's just on the outside range. And again, they're going to be inaccurate as well. In fact, there's the, um, the coastal battery. We can now sort of see the coastal battery. I might just point out the coastal batteries always have four guns on them. This is sort of how they then work. So the coastal battery is also going to be firing at us. There's some damage that's going in down in here. These guys look like they've actually been isolated a little bit. Uh, there's some problems in here, like they're actually really sort of, uh, they're struggling a little bit in, th in through this site. Um, not that we can tell anything much. There's a chance that we've done some damage here. In fact, it looks like that gun has been damaged. Which is a bit hard to tell with all the smoke. And this is again, smoke is a big feature of the game. Um, can't quite see the gun. No, the turret is still pointing out its way out, I think. Let's just see what we... Oh, no, that's the, that's the front. Yes, yeah, so we are actually firing at this thing. They don't run aground, uh, and also they don't collide. So, you know, the, the actual ship itself would be, would be minuscule. These are just representations of the ships as they sort of do things. But they're now pretty safe being back at home. I might just get it up to say normal speed now. So we just like we're staying at a range that we're comfortable with. Let's look and see if there's been any more hits that we know of. No, nothing big. <laughs> It's very inaccurate, this era. And a lot of the fights end up really with not much happening. Oh, they've moved out past Polar. Now, 
And so this goes on for a long, long period of time. We're halfway through the uh, battle at this point in time. I will just let it run forward now and uh, we'll just sort of see what actually does happen. Oh, that's interesting. The small ships, our small ships have actually gone in uh, through the, um, like they're sort of threading the needle through here. So we've got a, um, I think I'm pretty sure that's one of ours. Yeah, it is. So they're going in. Um, yeah, they're firing small guns at the Monarch class. And that is unusual. So um, the 8th Division, which is, if we have a look back, if we just cancel that, I think they've got the wrong order. Yeah, this is the support group. Was given the like they've they've interpreted the order incorrectly, and so they've actually gone through. They, they they've um, misunderstand the order. This is at twelve eleven. Um, identifies yep. So they're identifying the different ships again. The um, the Bellaria identifies unknown ship as battleship. Yeah, so it's now coming back in. It should be staying away from the fight, but it's actually not. And so it's straddling. It, we do. We are getting um, the monarch fires one medium gun at the Regina Regina uh, Pacis, and there's one hit. Now these guys have got no actual protection. If we have a look and see what actually happened there, and we'll have a look at that in just a minute. Um, there was a near miss back in through that side. Now a near miss can still do damage. That you can sort of get like splash damage nearby near the ship that will actually then do damage, particularly to things that don't have any armor like these um, these little corvettes. The Italian uh, Light Cruiser Division now also misunderstands the signal. And uh, some of the, the Reg Regina passes fires um, two five-inch guns at the uh, Monarch class. It straddles it. It does get a hit in on the, uh, on the, on the Monarch class with a five-inch gun. Sorry, three-inch gun. So it's firing its weaponry and, um, and doing some damage. You can see there there's a little bit going in. If we just go and right-click on the actual ship. Uh, no actual real damage done. There was, uh, I thought there was a hit on the Regina Passus. Anyway, the hit chance is very, very high, and the rate of fire is very, very high, but the actual uh, penetration chance is going to be very, very low. Like So the actual chance of doing damage here is minuscule. And we actually don't have any um, the secondary guns in through there as well. We don't actually have any torpedoes on these little ships. So if they had torpedoes, it would be fantastic, but they don't. So um, anyway, that's where they all are. Um, it's interesting. Three Monarch class. I thought there was only one Monarch, uh, two Monarch class ships, and then we've got these coming in as well. Again, uh, t attracting fire. Nothing's actually hit it just yet. Actually, we do have some armor on these. Twelve, in two inch. That may be enough to protect it. This could be interesting to sort of see what it does do. Um, these could do some damage on their way through. I might just go back to uh, slow speed again, <laughs> just so we can sort of pick up what's happening. So it's now threading its way back through again. And yeah, okay, so this is now the um, Regina Passus hull has been hit. And if we sort of click on that one and then right click, we can then bring it up. And so it has had a medium hit on it and flotation has taken some damage. So there is a little bit of flotation damage on the actual ship itself. So this, um, if I want to see what that actually is, doesn't remember the width, so I'm not just move that over. So uh, shell burst limited by the coal bunker. So it actually hit, hit it passed into the um, into the hull of the ship and uh, hit the coal bunker. So let's just go and uh, allow that to continue. And we're coming back out again. Superstructure has been hit, and um, one of the turrets was destroyed on the Regina Passus. So we now are taking a lot of damage. Again, if we have a look and see what's actually happened with this one, so we can now see the structure. It's almost it's almost been completely destroyed. There's only like 160 left of its uh, of its structure, and the flotation is also now taking some damage. There's been three medium hits. Uh, it's still travelling at 12, so the maximum speed is 14. Hopefully, it's now got its orders to get out of there, <laughs> and not and not engage. That was a ridiculous order that it that it took to um, go charging in. Uh, yeah, that really was not a good idea. The uh, the forward uh, the forward area has been destroyed, so the forward um, forward turret has been destroyed, and the aft turret has been disabled. So uh, not in a good position at this point in time. Will it escape? Uh, hopefully it will. It's attracting more fire. There was a hit again on it, I think. Yep, the fore and aft hull had been hit and also um, had been... Um, so this one will be getting even worse now. 
yeah, flotation, it's it's almost going to sink at this stage. Just close. So this is now, they've now turned the tables. And that will then sort of uh, dwindle away, I think. Yeah, it's staying close to the Regina Passus. There's been a few new misses on it, so they're still, they're still peppering it. Our ships are staying, are keeping a healthy distance now. It's not going to survive if we have another quick look at it. Actually, there's no more flooding coming in. If it can get away, it, it may be able to limp its way home. You can see there that it's detached itself from the actual group. If we go back to the order of battle, Regina Parsis is now operating, operating in, in, independently. And so it's just going to try to do its own thing. And so misorders like what that like you know that group got the order to charge at the battleships, <laughs> which is not a clever move. Anyway, the Regina Passus is out of the battle. It's not taking on any water, so it may be able to limp back home unless unless they send something else out to capture it. Uh, our ships look like they've had enough. Their battleships are just masking uh, Polar. I don't know if we're going to turn around and have another go at them. They're moving back down. We're now starting to lose identification. Let's just speed things up again. Okay, we've now lost sight of them. And the game will now just sort of play out. Um, it looks like the battle's now over. And I can just click on fastest and then that will go, it's now twilight, it's now the end of the day and that should be the end of it as we come up to the elapsed time. We're going to Venice. So no opposing ships are in sight uh, of each other and the scenario length has reached, the scenario is over. So we didn't lose any ships but we got very very close. Let's have a look and see what actually happened with this. So what we end up having is um, Austria-Hungary had uh, one battleship that was undamaged and two lightly damaged in through that side. Uh, Nothing else took any damage in, in their particular group. From our side, uh, the two battleships, one, one sustained light damage and one was medium damage. Uh, nothing happened at all with our cruisers, so they, they were actually both okay. Uh, and of course, we had very heavy damage on the Regina Passus, uh, which we sort of saw that happening during the actual fight itself. Uh, from that one, so the point damage to enemy ships was 82. Their point damage to us was 3,031. They did a much, much better than what we did. So that's a real, real concern to us. And so the overall ship score is 2,949 to them. Um, points for survivors picked up. Neither side picked up any survivors. And so the total points we had were the 82, and theirs was the 3,031. And so the victor, the victor was Austria-Hungary. Now, that's not how many victory points they get, but they won that engagement. And you can sort of see why why they won it. They actually, you know, they did damage to us. They did more, much more substantial damage. Now, I don't know if, the, um, if what would have happened... Uh, if this one hadn't, if they hadn't have charged in like they did, um, I don't know what the thing is, but we actually did take medium damage to one of our ships, and that's a problem. Uh, whereas, you know, you can see their light damage for theirs, it's hardly, hardly anything actually happened. Now, we've got uh, ship details, we can sort of have a bit of, a, bit of a look to sort of see what actually did actually happen there. The, the ammo, you know, the rounds, etc. Um, the hit percentages that we can sort of see in, down through that side, like the. Um, uh, where is it? The Italia and the, the Napoli. Um, ammo hit scored. They scored nothing with their main guns. Um, torpedoes. Then they had um, heavy hits that came in. They both sustained a fair bit of hits coming back in their, their way. So anyway, that sort of just gives a, a bit of a summary as to what actually happened during the actual combat itself. We'll close that one off. Just go to close. And when we close this down now, so when I close this off from here... It's an enemy marginal victory. And so we got a little bit of victory point from it, and then they they scored the majority of the victory points. So they got a little bit, we got a, we got a little bit as well, but they're now winning the war, <laughs> unfortunately. So we'll just click on okay. And so, um, and we'll finish construction of another six inch coastal battery in, in East, uh, in Italian East, the, on the Italian East Coast. Um, trade warfare summary. So, um, 
this is just going to sort of then also impact the what actually happens through here. So uh, no submarine activity because it's still very, very early days in terms of what that is. But radar and submarine events, the Italian radar, the CL Messina, which we had set up uh, as the radar, um, pretty sure if we just, yeah, that was the radar, uh, sinks three Austrian merchant ships in the Mediterranean. So this is actually, this is probably the way we can have to fight this, this war to a degree. Uh, so we, we pick up a little bit in through there. The uh, so enemy merchants sunk were three. A friendly merchants sunk none. They they can't afford to really put any of their their light cruisers onto that sort of duty. Uh, enemy victory points from trade warfare um, and friendly victory points from trade warfare was fifteen. So a little bit of victory points in through there. So we close that one off. This is the summary. So um, don't know if it give us the what actually happened through there, but that's actually all okay. So they've actually commissioned another two battleships. Hmm, that's a concern. <laughs> okay, so we'll close that one. Um, and uh, that is a concern, actually. Well, there we are. That's sort of where we are at this point in time. Um, I'll have to leave this episode here, but that was that was playing out a battle with the, that the AI controlled, and it does a good job of, of doing that. It does, um, like it kept away from the torpedo range, which is vitally important. It stayed in the combat longer than what I would have. I would have actually run away earlier, uh, but um, but they stayed in the fight. It's very inaccurate, these guns that we actually do actually have. If we could have got a couple of hits in, I think we would have done some reasonable damage because their ships are much, much less armor than what ours are but you saw there even with the armor that we had it just wasn't great so anyway guys i'm going to leave this episode here and then we'll come back and uh, we've only been at war for two months and that was a fairly big fleet engagement that we sort of saw there i'll catch you next time thanks for watching